We are coming to you live at 6 a.m. with breaking news of a homicide investigation in City Heights. Now, this is happening on Orange Avenue between 35th Street and Wilson. Police are still looking for a suspect. Here's CBS 8's Anna Laurel joining us live from the scene now with the very latest. Good morning, Anna. Good morning, you guys. Yeah, a very active scene out here. A lot of police officers. We've seen some detectives show up in just the last 15 minutes or so. And so here's what I can tell you right now. They've closed off this area, Orange Avenue, between 35th Street and Wilson. Totally closed right now. Police say around 4.15 this morning, they got a call to come out here. A man had been shot. They confirm now that man has died. It's a homicide investigation now. They're looking for the shooter or shooters. No one is in custody. Um, my photographer now says that he can see a few uh, bullet casings out on the street out here on Orange Avenue. So again, they've got this whole street blocked off and more and more neighbors are starting to come out. Police are going door to door talking to them. Um, this morning, we'll start going and talking to those people, see if we can see if anybody saw anything or heard anything. That's what police are doing right now. They told us in the last few minutes they'll come out in about 45 minutes to an hour and give us a briefing. Let us know. Of course, the big question is uh, where is that suspect or suspects? Uh, we'll be reporting live from the scene here on Orange Avenue. Stay away from this area, 35th Street through Wilson. It is closed right now. Back to you guys. Anna, we appreciate your coverage there. We'll check back with you soon. And now to new developments regarding two separate mass shootings over the weekend. A man opened fire at a Laguna Woods church yesterday, killing one person. It happened one day after a gunman killed 10 people at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York, in what investigators say was a racially motivated shooting. Right now, authorities do not know the motive for the shooting in Orange County. Right, well, here's what we do know. The gunman attacked people at a Taiwanese church at a luncheon after the service. It happened around 1.30 yesterday afternoon. One person was killed and five others were hurt. Authorities say the shooter is an Asian man in his 60s. 30 to 40 people were having lunch after the church service when this happened. Of course, people in that quiet, mostly retired community are stunned. It's a very um, quiet community. And uh, to see that was just a, I mean, hear about it, you know, my heart goes out to the church. The people here is just so nice. And here's the incredible part of the story. Authorities say most of the people at this luncheon yesterday were seniors. But when the gunman started shooting, the pastor threw a chair at him and other churchgoers tackled him, even hogtied his legs and held him until authorities got there. Meantime, this morning, we are learning more about the 18-year-old accused of killing 10 people at that supermarket in Buffalo, New York. Authorities believe that attack was racially motivated. Bradley Blackbird now with the latest from Buffalo. The city of Buffalo, New York, is in mourning after a mass shooting left 10 dead at a supermarket. This is not open season on, on, on African Americans. Investigators say suspect Peyton Gendron specifically targeted the store because he wanted to kill as many black people as possible. The 18-year-old has pleaded not guilty to first-degree murder charges. The evidence that we have uncovered so far makes no mistake that this is an absolute racist hate crime. Last year, police questioned Gendron after he reportedly made threats at his high school in Conklin, New York. They interviewed the subject and they felt it was appropriate at that time to have that individual brought in for a mental health evaluation. The state police did their job to the fullest that they could at that time. Buffalo residents said they were astonished by the allegations. It boggles my mind that this young man traveled 200 miles, four hours, um, to target our community it just boggles the mind. On Sunday, President Biden condemned the attack. The White House says the president and first lady will come here to Buffalo tomorrow to join the city in mourning. Police say Gendron live streamed the attack and though a spokesperson for the site Twitch insists it was pulled down within two minutes, it does raise questions about what more social media companies could or should be doing to prevent publicizing violence. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Buffalo. And we are learning about another deadly shooting, this time at a flea market in Texas. Two people were killed. Three others were hurt in this shooting yesterday. Investigators say it started as a fight. Then people start, several people started shooting. Two suspected shooters are now in custody and another is in the hospital. 
These shootings are just a few of the 200 mass shootings that have happened this year. Now President Biden again voicing his anger and frustration about gun violence and hate in America. Before these shootings, the president urged local officials to spend $10 billion of the American Rescue Plan money on public safety. At the same time, lawmakers have also been unable to find a way forward on gun control, but some officials say they need to try harder. I just think we can find common ground on some of these measures, targeted measures like restricting the size of magazines. And if we can't, why not just put it up for a vote and show Americans which side that you're on? A recent CBS News poll found 59% of Americans say crime should be a higher priority issue and 61% disapprove of how the president is handling it. And in response to the shootings, a vigil against gun violence and against white supremacy will be held at Baboa Park. It's happening tonight near the park's fountain at 6 o'clock. This morning, a second person is in custody for the shooting death of a mother in Lincoln Park. The victim was just identified as 31-year-old Seng Yiche. Police say this began as an argument between neighbors early Saturday morning. The victim's 12-year-old son was also shot once in the leg and her husband was assaulted. Officers arrested 22-year-old Alex Galvan. He's charged with murder. 24-year-old Abraham Galvan was also arrested and booked for assault. Police are still looking for a third man. Today, an arraignment is scheduled for the woman accused of a road rage incident in Chula Vista. 19-year-old Serenity Nieblas is believed to be the driver of the car. Police say she helped the main suspect escape the incident on Olympic Parkway and Town Center Drive earlier this month. A big step today for San Diego County's mental health crisis team. Starting today, agencies will begin referring mental health calls that come into 911 to the team. This includes all 11 law enforcement agencies throughout the county. The team is made up of mental health specialists who are trained and qualified to respond to non-life-threatening mental health emergency calls. But before calling 911, the county encourages people to first call its crisis line at the number on your screen here to reach a mobile crisis response team member. That number is 888-724-7240. And today, the Supreme Court set to issue opinions on cases heard during its current term. However, the court does not say which cases will be released, so it is still unclear if they'll issue an official decision on Roe v. Wade. Judicial experts say the fate of Roe v. Wade is likely weeks away still. A Supreme Court draft opinion on that case was leaked earlier this month, as we've been reporting, and that draft opinion suggested the court could soon strike down Roe v. Wade and would allow more than two dozen states to restrict or ban and access to abortions. Meantime, as the fate of Roe v. Wade remains uncertain, dozens of people gathered downtown to rally for the right to get an abortion. This was yesterday. At least 50 people marched down 4th Avenue. As you see, they're holding signs. They were chanting. On Saturday, hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets all across the country. That include more rallies here in San Diego. They're demanding nationwide abortion rights be upheld. This morning, fire crews in Orange County continue to hold back the coastal fire. Right now, the fire 80% contained, and they still have the total acres burned at 200. 20 homes were destroyed in this multi-million dollar homes, 11 others damaged. Investigators are looking into electrical circuit activity as a possible cause. And now we want to show you this celestial phenomenon. Take a look right here, the super flower blood moon eclipse. A big name for something that's pretty rare and special. If you missed it last night, well, don't worry. We have a time lapse of it right here. This is footage actually from the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. They had a clear view there with their big old telescope. Lunar eclipses like this happen when the sun, the earth, the moon all align. So the earth is casting a shadow on the full moon's surface. So that's our shadow right there on the moon that you're seeing. The peak here in San Diego happened about 9-11 last night. For some, if you were along the coast, it was too cloudy to see. But many inland areas had a good chance to get a view. And we have some photos from our viewers. So thank you so much. Dan Wyman sent this picture from Fallbrook. Look how red that was. Nice job, Dan. Great image right there. And then Nadia Boyd sent another photo from Lakeside. This is awesome, too. I mean, what kind of cameras are you using? You can always send us those pictures and videos. Go to the CBS 8 app, click on the near me feature, and we love to see views from all across town wherever you are. So, yeah, many inland places. Fallbrook, likely a good spot. Uh, Mountains, deserts. Yeah, that was cool to see, but 
not me for the, at the coast. At least I appreciate the pictures that yeah. we've been getting. Yeah, exactly. No, we got some beautiful photos. You can still send yours in on the CBS 8 app if you'd like. We have had wonderful submissions, but I was in the same boat last night. When I was going to bed, I was looking outside and I thought, these clouds look a little too dense for me to be able to see that moon shining through. So uh, it really is dependent on how far inland you were last night. Clouds have really strengthened in the overnight hours. We're dealing with quite a bit of haze and overcast skies, those low stratus clouds for the most part to kick off your Monday morning. By the afternoon, we're going to see those clouds break apart. Temperatures are going to warm to a few degrees warmer than average, and then those temperatures really stay stagnant all week long. So look at what you can expect for this afternoon across your coastline all the way through your deserts, and then pretty much uh, copy and paste through the remainder of the week. Tuesday through Friday, we're going to see temperatures just in about the same range. The biggest deviation that we'll see is maybe two, three degrees or so. So 71 along the coast to 80 inland, 74 for the mountains and 103 degrees again for the deserts. We're going to see those triple digits. Here's that live look outside. That sunrise came about 20 minutes ago is at 549. The sunset is going to come at 741 and you can see what we're working with. Plenty of clouds and then of course the sun coming up from the opposite direction that is showing off uh, how dense those clouds are. But once those clouds clear, we're going to have sunshine in the forecast. So this is what it looks like as you walk out the door. 57 in Carlsbad right now as well as Del Mar. 48 in Ramona cooling down by a hair. 53 in Alpine right now and 59 in San Diego and Chula Vista. We'll keep those temperatures warming up and get to the 70s along the coast this afternoon. Uh, expectation that tomorrow onshore flow will strengthen just a bit and cool us down by two, three degrees. And then we warm back up to that uh, about average, if not warmer than average range for Wednesday through Friday. Plenty of sunshine by the afternoon. Let's talk about traffic. There's actually been quite a bit going on, so I want to zoom in and it's a little bit tough to make out because we're going to focus on all three at once, but I want to take you to just this stretch of of about uh, downtown all the way through University Heights uh, where we have three different things to mention. Want to go from right to left because this is kind of in severity. First one is on a highway, so that's why I want to mention the 94 westbound at Massachusetts Avenue. Slow lane is blocked, so take some caution as you're passing westbound on the 94. Second one is where we have uh, Anna Laurel out there on the scene uh, with this uh, investigation, the shooting investigation. The road is closed with police activity there on Orange Avenue both ways from Wilson to Swift. Last thing I want to take you to is being cleared as we speak. This is off of the major roadway. Looks like this is just on Avenida del Rio at Camino uh, de la Reina, and this is just off of the 8 and the 163 where we're seeing either that crash took place uh, about an hour ago. Back to you.